Inexperienced DJs may show up to an event with just a couple of speakers thinking that will get the job done. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. So in today's video, we are going to talk through a few of the considerations that you need to keep top of mind when you're planning out the sound for your specific venue. There are a multitude of considerations that come along with planning out the equipment that you need for your big day to make sure it goes perfect, but let's get the biggest one out of the way first, and that is cost. Everyone has a budget that they're comfortable with, a budget that they need to follow, but just make sure when you are considering which things to add or which things to leave out into your big day that you understand the pros and cons of having less or having more sound. Yes, it will almost always be more expensive when you need to include more sound. With cost out of the way, let's talk about location as it pertains to your venue. There are a ton of venues that will have a cocktail hour or a ceremony located outside of the venue with the primary reception happening inside. When it comes to proper sound application, in my experience, not all venues know how to address this correctly. I've had some scenarios where venues have recommended we just simply turn a speaker to face out a window. Understanding maybe a little bit better how sound works, how sound travels, this is almost always not an ideal solution. If you have a setup like this for your wedding, maybe you don't need a full sound system with low end subwoofers outside for a cocktail hour or for a ceremony, but I highly encourage you to consider having a second set of speakers in that area, even if they're smaller speakers, to make sure sound travels correctly for the parts of the day that you need that audio coverage. Another consideration is battery powered equipment. Uh, this is something that has been increasing in popularity lately, especially as it pertains to ceremonies, but having a smaller sound system that's fully battery powered is definitely the way to go with a few of those remote ceremony locations that might be further away from the venue that don't have a direct line or access to power. In some instances, you might have a different floor or a different room that needs audio for a cocktail hour that's removed from where the primary reception or dinner is taking place. Or in some instances, you might have dinner split up into multiple rooms. And if that's the case, you wanna make sure you have proper audio application set up for both of those rooms, just because of the way that sound travels. The further you have to project sound from the source, the quieter it's going to be. So another way to think about this is your guests that are closest to where the audio is coming from, they're going to get blasted with the full volume that's coming from your speakers, just so some guests at the further end of the room can actually hear what's going on, whether that be the music or the toasts. Whereas if you have the ability, or if you're working with a DJ that has the ability to provide additional speakers, you can really even out that sound. So no one's getting a full blast of audio, but instead it's getting more evenly spaced across different rooms, across different floors, or even if it is a large room. Another important note and something that I would caution anyone against, yes, you can save money by having your DJ move equipment from one room to the other, but not only do you have downtime in the music for however long it takes to break everything down, move things, set things back up, but also in a rushed environment where things have to move quickly, there's a risk that in that rush, in that hurry to set everything up, there's not proper time for sound checks and things uh, could potentially go wrong. So I always encourage couples instead to consider getting the equipment they need for every room that they need that equipment in instead of trying to manufacture ways to move from one location to the next um, just to avoid those pitfalls that could come up. On the topic of sound, something that I think is also nice to think about, and this relates more towards the dance floor experience, is the inclusion of additional subwoofers. Depending on the type of music that you like to listen to, um, but in particular, if you are a fan of more hip hop or pop or EDM music, highly recommend considering additional subwoofers to provide more of that low end, 
especially if you have a lot of guests at your wedding or if your venue is large, if the dance floor space or even the room that the dance floor is in is large, having additional subwoofers will let you really feel that music more on the dance floor, which often fans of electronic music or hip hop or pop music typically want that feeling, that nightclub feel in the low end of their music. Additional subwoofers can definitely do the trick. All in all, there are a lot of considerations when it comes to the space that you are celebrating in. And that's why it's so important to have a conversation with your DJ to make sure that they understand all the logistics and all the different elements at play to give you the exact experience that you're looking for to help you celebrate potentially one of the most important days of your life. Hopefully this has been helpful and has allowed you to think of some things you may not have considered before. The most important takeaway here is ask your DJ uh, what they think the proper application is for the rooms that they'll be providing their service in. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.